faithful need some TLC. There's a couple things I need to address on the truck. Uh, not so much stuff on the trailer. The trailer is actually uh, done very, very well. Uh, I did have to weld the spare tire bracket up here. It kind of rattled a little bit and, well, the new trailer won't have that style bracket, I'll tell you that much. But the 080, I'm having a little issue with it. The hydraulic seems slow. And I think I have an idea what it is, but I ordered a whole net of, set of filters for this thing a while back. Did a full service change on it. New hydraulic filters, new engine oil, new fuel, everything. It didn't seem to pick it up, but right now it's it's really doggish on the turning speed and the blade speed. So it's pilot control, so I gotta find the pilot control filter. And I'm thinking it might be back here. I looked last night, but it was it was pitch black. Let's see here. Ugh. There it is. Oh boy. How do I get to that thing? I need to take this off. It's back there. So you get this big old kit of filters and the easy ones are easy to find you got one huge one right here you got one inside the tank i added some fluid to it the other day that's why it's kind of a mess um those are your hydraulic ones then there's one down there for a case drain yada yada you come back to the back you got your fuel there's another fuel filter over there on the side the water catcher then the oil filters down there what that pilot filter and it came with one in the kit so we need to go get this thing off right here more often than not i use these little toolboxes this one I actually i thought was a 3 8 drive set but half inch and it is super handy make sure you close her up and push her out of the way that way you don't accidentally kick it come on baby and don't look like a slider i ought to go down the shop and get the freaking power tools there it is right there so this is your hydraulic pump right here that's your engine come off hydraulic pump you got your main pressure lines that go over to your huge valve body on the other side and you have this little guy low pressure but this is what controls the machine you send hydraulic pressure to the joysticks so you have pilot controls that's what that means so let's see if we can get that sucker off and uh, I'll probably should run down the shop and get some so they'll catch that. Maybe I got some. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Let's try that. Put this big guy in there. I got my rag down on the bottom. Let's go ahead and break this thing free. Come on, get back on there, you sucker. how dirty that thing is I just didn't even know about this thing's location oh that makes me happy knowing that this kit came with one oh I don't have to try to source one I'll try to find a part number good kit let's install it I would say she is pretty pretty cooked the fact that it's suctioned in I'd have to rev it up to wide open throttle to get a half throttle kind of power. It even came with the new roll ring. Like it should. It's 400 bucks worth of filters for this whole thing. 300? I think I ordered a couple duplicates. Just so you have them. Because some stuff you can just buy at Napa. But then other stuff is a little bit more difficult so I ordered doubles of those so I spent 400 bucks on stuff and it came with a new one of these thankful let's blow this out with some brake clean all right we'll get her off my uh yeah the whole machine on my workbench my diamond suit workbench strapped it down too in case it got wild we'll get her on hooked doesn't appear to be leaking I'll put the filter back in it I'm hoping <laughs> let's get her unstrapped and give her a try because it was it was getting pretty bad. It was like, dang, is that a pump? So I need to buy a new machine? What is going on? Uh, it's unrealistic to buy a new machine because the freaking controls get a little weird. 
way cheaper to buy like if you had to uh, a pump or something I'm being kind of optimistic that it's just a filter but I changed all the other filters it leads me to believe maybe the little Kubota has got the same thing which I'm sure it does because it seemed to be dragging a little bit in the last couple years but we don't use it that much so this one gets used all the time a little hard to tell when the machine's cold so let's get her warmed up that's like 3,000 pounds it's starting to tilt me just a little bit watch the blade on the 080 this thing has got a really I would say pretty dang quick blade on idle before it's cold that's so hard to tell that's how it was before didn't want to lift it up but I can't recall before on idle but it's lifting me up now so half throttle that's doing better than it was I would guess I will fully admit that I'm overly optimistic about changing the filter, but you never know. Something simple like that will make a difference. It should have been changed probably the last time I did this machine. At this point in time, I think it's just shy of 2,800 hours. Uh, it needed to be changed. That little pilot oil filter is something that I never even knew exact location of it, so forgive me for letting that happen, Kubota. I am sorry. But I got a couple big jobs planned with this thing, so we are just going to throw it back in the swing of things and see how it performs. But I'm going to try a couple things around the yard just so you guys can see what it looks like um, in the slow motion. I need to do this for a while. This damn greasewood bush right above my well. I'd like to build a pump house over this thing. So let's see if we can... Without breaking a pipe. that thing off with a chainsaw for the longest time but that doesn't get us anywhere because then I still got a stump. Now no stump, no bush, no nothing. Well, after the extensive 30-minute testing at the house, I was mildly convinced that the machine was better. But nevertheless, we have some work to do with it. It's a working machine, but it didn't quite feel like it was up to its uh, former standards. We're out here, three acre conversion. There's going to be a build site right around where the Prime Tech's mulching right there. Most of the time, I try to haul as many logs as possible. Uh, right now, I'm carrying one log because we are in the final stages of this job, so I'm just going around picking up loose ends. Uh, reason why we don't run a skitter on jobs like this is we have found the excavators to be so much more efficient and better use of our time because I carry a chainsaw with me. I go back and forth getting the logs like you would with a skitter, but I can go out there, I can flip the trees over, flip the logs over, bump knots, bunch of everything, and I can shovel the timber um, towards the landing when I go out and grab skids, and it's just so much easier with an excavator. Plus, I can arrange the brush into windrows for the masticator to come through, but most of this job, I was fighting the turn motor on this machine, the the blade was slow and I ended up finding the bank on the valve body so that I could turn up the pressure a little bit so that I could actually move these logs. But by the time we were done with this job, I think we ended up being about 15 loads out of here. It's now very much dry. The road worked perfect out of this. Um, you know, it's just time to figure out what we're going to do. We got another big job came up. We ended up getting a 300 on that site so we didn't have to deal with uh, bringing a track chipper in because a big mulcher just ground it all up. But we're bringing it back to the house and we're going to put some new stuff on it. I don't see an there, man. I don't no, just metal to metal. Is there something inside that thing? Yeah, you can't. Okay. Keep talking. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of inch. Well, I figured it'd press in. Anyway, so changing that uh, the pilot oil filter up there, it didn't help anything. I mean, I'm sure it 
wasn't a bad idea, but it didn't make the uh, turret rotation, the slew power, or the blade go any faster. So doing some investigating, messing with this bank of the valve body, the pressure for it goes over to the other side to uh, a little, little pump. Got the big guy, and then they have this one. Obviously, that's the old one. This is the new one. We're hoping that'll fix it because I would uh, up the pressure a little bit, and it actually gave me slew power for moving logs. But if I turned it down, it, yeah, it didn't have no power, but our speed sucked, and you max out the pressure, this hose here would get tight. The one that goes over there and is easy to track because it's the only one that says Bridgestone on it. So we're going to try swapping this out. Hopefully this fixes the issue. Machine's got uh, almost 2,900 hours on it. It's going. After I ran it here, uh, yeah, like the blade is fast. I ran it here and mulched around the pond with the seam off on this, and it uh, that next job I took it to, it didn't seem like it had the the blade. I noticed right off the bat, but then it seemed like that turret, like that's all it would go right there. But now it's it wouldn't even go fast enough where you could get violent. Cause like Mark could have ran it before we swapped that pump because it was so slow. You couldn't get that grapple to do that. Yeah. No, I think just the strain of the side hill maybe. No. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that's the timeline. Well, boys, this is where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like 10.30 at night. I went and worked on a different machine. My dad and uncle and I tried getting a, another, another rig that broke down. Literally, we had three machines on one job. The 080, the 12, and the first job for the 300, and all three broke down on that job. This one not as bad it took us another job and a half or so before we realized it but uh the 12 ended up going back to the dealer you saw that it had some warranty work and then the 200 has still been broke down for over a month on one job it cannot move so we put it back together we're going to try and pull it out of there uh sometime this week or maybe this weekend but uh yeah It'll be nice to have the 080 back in full tilt. I'm just giving her a shot of juice here before I put it on the trailer because I don't think I have a lot of space for filling this thing tomorrow morning when I get to the site. I think I'm going to have to unload out in the street, so I'll just give it its couple. I don't know, probably only put 10 gallons in it right now, but, you know, one less thing to have to deal with in the morning, the better, because i got about an hour's drive to the job. And um, get this, I'll get that in a second when I'm done talking to you guys. But the 080 is pretty much the main machine that we use every job. It goes on every job pretty much. I mean, it's always needed on every job. We're not just taking it there just for the heck of it. So to have this thing back in full tilt. I remember the first time I ran this machine when I went to go look at it, I thought, dang, the blade is super, super quick. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. Get to a spot where you guys aren't super blinded. But uh, the last two or three jobs, it just really got super sluggish. So just noticing the blade and then the slew, the rotating power really died out. So just running it for a minute, it felt like the old machine. So that new pump really did it. And I'm sure all the new filters 
uh, wasn't a bad idea. But I'm going to end it here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. It is stark. It's late. I'm kind of tired. I feel like I got some other stuff to do. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go edit this video for you guys. Have a good day and uh, stay busy out there. What you're after, your goals, earn it. Just keep up with it. That's all I can say. Because uh, chances are nobody's going to give you everything that you want. You're going to have to go work for it. And there's good honor in that. But we'll see you guys later.